field, football field, to gain the victory? Is it, is it the coach? Is it the quarterback, the halfback, fullback? Who, who is the most important person to gain that victory on the field? Think about it, run through the numbers. Who do you think that is? The team. The team. No. Come on, who? Who's the most important person? It's not a deep question. All right. Oh, come on, come on, come on. I'm going to have three minutes into this thing. All right. Listen, it's not the quarterback. It's not the fullback. It's not, the, it's not them. It's the bus driver. Right? If you don't get to the field, you forfeit the game. That's a dire original. Okay. I'm the bus driver. You're the team. I, thank you, Lord, got you here. The victory is yours. This is just a building. You're the church. There's a ministry in this community, in this county, in this state, in this country. You can have effect. All I've done is got you here. Thank you, Lord. All the Lord has done through me. I have a spiritual gift. You have a spiritual gift. Those gifts are critical in gaining that victory. So, Grace Valley Bible Church, taking out, uh, taking out the old, putting in the new. It's a transformation process. And I'm going to use an analogy. Transformation process on us as individuals. What God can do in us it's the same thing as what he's done here. And again, we're talk, I'm talking about three plus years of what's happened here. All right, we've birthed a second church. Some of us were actually involved in birthing doctrinal studies. What's that, 74? Yes. 73, 74? 74. 74. 74. Well, you're pretty old. Okay, so personal reflections. First things first. I've been seriously privileged to come along three, the side of three impressive people, giants of the faith. They're enormous communicators. I don't need to read this. Enormous communicators have an enormous effect. Two evangelists, possibly three, one communicator, teacher. Reflecting on how the Spirit has empowered my own spiritual gift, servicing theirs. I find myself seriously humbled, Ron, to sit at your feet all these many years. Horton, it's been amazing to come alongside your ministry. Chuck Farmer, whew, an evangelist, wow, impressive man. Willie, hmm. where I stand, you sit within this visual aid, this building of God's power and grace is a direct result of our pastor's faithfulness to his calling. Yeah. And his patience with us. 
the Lord's sheep, he's responsible to shepherd and teach. And then the Lord says to me, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. If anyone really knows me, I'm, I'm pretty strong natured, right, Al? I kind of have my uh, tendency to drive. This has been quite an education for me over the past few years to stop doing that and listen. My thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. I have not driven anything in the past several months, years. I have gotten out of the way. And God, his plan has been amazing to me. I had no idea about what he was about to do or expect of me. But I did understand that if I chose to get out of the way and allow the Spirit to empower my spiritual gift, he, the Holy Spirit, would accomplish the task to glorify the Father. This has been a spiritual exercise for me. Not a physical one. It's been a spiritual exercise for me from, from the very start. On two fronts. First, back in 18, if I'm correct, God the Holy Spirit took a man of God seriously hungry for understanding, pulling truth out of my soul every week for two years, categorically developing his own spiritual muscle, sitting right there. I did not initiate that connection. That, that connection in a moment exploded in both our lives. A man of God recognizing that he had the spiritual gift of evangelist after we went through the exercise of spiritual gifts three times. <laughs> yeah, all right. And he engaged with that gift, with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we've had, what, 58, 59 saved here in Moody, Alabama. Amazing. His perfect timing. All right. Understand, folks, three years back, in 18, when we looked at this building and wanted to move here, all right, we were simply a body of mature believers. We, we logistically move here, and what are we going to do? Go out and knock on doors? How are we going to introduce ourselves to the community? How is that going to work? But God holding us back and then setting up and uh, revealing us to this community through Willie and his ministry has been enormous. That took place before we occupied this building. That gym down there, or that building with all that equipment in it, all right, has become an enormous ministry. And he's a resource of sound biblical instruction. As a result, we, this church, has been exposed to the community. Some of you are actually from this community. Thank you. Fantastic way you do things, Father. All right. But God, it's been two years. This is my personal opinion. I, we, this has all been happening out here in the, in the community, everything else, and then I say, Father, okay, that's fantastic, that's great, but it's been two years. We, we still need a church building. We need a location. How many times I, I call the realtors out here trying to find a location? 
God, the Holy Spirit commissioned to oversee a little house cleaning. Ron called me and said, would you t undertake this task? Folks, that was a huge request. I was not equipped to do this, and yet he had asked me to do it. And I said yes, expecting God to enable that to happen. Whew. Okay. That, that, that is a permit to renovate this building. All right. Down in the lower left hand is my name, my signature, and the date. Can you see that? I don't know if the podium is in the way or not. But understand what's in yellow up there is a contractor. That's me. <laughs> that, 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 that's funny. And that's scary. <laughs> would you call for a home, we're building your home and whatever, would you call a contractor that had never been a contractor to get the job done? <laughs> no. Thank you, Ron. <laughs> but here I am. This building, uh, the, the in Moody, the building, um, my goodness. Uh, yes, the building inspector. Thank you. Asked me when I went in to this, he asked me, who is your contractor? And I said, no. he said, okay, sign here. <laughs> Okay, you're the contractor, all right? All right, and thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. And I know I'm taking a little bit of freedom there with that text. This is a gift. This is a gift. Okay, my initial response, those are small pictures, but that's Grace, that's a Church of the Valley, all right? three, well, a year ago. That's Church of the Valley, the front and the back, okay? And my response, seriously, God, <laughs> it's falling apart, and it was. It's gonna cost us too much. Money that we don't have, that was true. God's response, you're right. <laughs> it is a mess, and you don't have the money. But my grace will be enough. Woof. Yeah, woof. Have all of you learned that yet? My goodness. It's enough. Overwhelming needs, overwhelming challenges absolutely no resources to get it done. Contractor to rebuild the building? <clears throat> His grace is enough. My response? Thank you for the reminder. Okay. Michael Jones. Michael Jones. God sent us Michael Jones. Mike, Michael, has been desiring to build us a building for decades. It was his commission. It was his commission. He, a, a contractor, retired, working with his dad now, but having all these connections with all of these painters and plumbers and carpenters and whatever, all right? He and his wife stepped up. Whew. And, Mike, thank you. Our deepest gratitude. This would not have happened without Michael, without God sending Michael at this point in time. I mean, he was out here every day. And thank you. There are those of you here, this would not have happened without your grace, without your gifts, without your being here, getting the job done being patient with me, encouraging me. <laughs> so
So let's talk, let's take a walk through it, okay? This is what it first looked like, all right? I don't know, all of you didn't make, I, anyway, this is what it looked like first. And of course the, the projector is making it real red, but we had a stage here and the podium and behind the podium back here were these double doors. And that led through a small staircase, you can see up into these small rooms that were in the back, all right? So they're beautiful floors, my goodness. Beautiful floors, note the doors. And then I say, Mama, you're sitting out here. And your child in the nursery back there is needing you. Not a problem. Simply walk up on the stage past Ron. <laughs> That's where we were. It wasn't functional. It just was not functional. And then walking the layout of it down and back and so forth, it was like a time lapse back in the 60s and 70s. All right, but then there was Rhonda. <laughs> and the walls began to crumble. And T, and then you had Tina, and we, she had an anger management class down there. I mean, she, I mean, she tore into those walls. Uh, and as a result, her feeling, she felt much better and made a mess. And the walls were no more. It's going to run through a series here. All right. Folks, this is our lives. This is us. These are walls within us. This is what God does in us. This is what the Word of God, what the Holy Spirit does in us. He tears down those walls. We need to engage in allowing him to do just this. This is a visual aid that he has worked on through me for years, for months, for this moment. These walls in our lives need to come down. He's not trying to pretty things up. He's tearing things up. Engage. And there are those individuals who he will bring to the exercise that weren't there before. That will help these young men. This would not have happened without these young men. These guys are from the community. These, this is how, from Willie's ministry which had taken place over the previous two years. God did all that beforehand in order to get this done. <sighs> Thank you. Who's that old guy in the back? <laughs> okay, new church building. <laughs> okay. All right, here's the stage. This is what happens. And again, this is how God puts things back together. How he renovates us. How he, how he enables things to happen in our lives that restructure us. It's, it's a transformation going on inside our lives that end up Creating an individual who has impact. That when individuals look at you and listen to what you have to say, they see Christ, not you. The guys are beautiful. <laughs> look at the muscles. Time I spend with Willie weekly down there in that ministry, we're developing spiritual muscle. Those young men are developing spiritual muscle. Okay. <laughs> Sidetrack here. Tyler Class, which unfortunately he's not here this morning, 
is a Marine. He had gotten out of the Marines and actually, I believe next month will be his second birthday in Christ. I led him to Christ at the Cracker Barrel. <laughs> Out loud, Tyler accepted Jesus Christ. People looking all <laughs> it, it was a moment. Tyler got involved, all right, and putting these lights up up here, all right? You see the globe, the light globe there? I learned there, there were used to be eight. There's six up here now. There used to be eight. The contract, electricians, whatever, went through two of them. Those globes are extremely fragile. And there are, if they can find one online, there are a hundred bucks. If you can find one. We're down to six. Tyler's up there, all right? And we're having to change the, make LED light bulbs in this thing, all right? So we're having to take the globes down. There are no nuts, screws in the top of this thing to hold that globe up there. There's a sleeve up top that you lift up and the globe drops. Okay. I'm walking down the aisle here. Tyler's up there and he's working on the light. And I tell him, be very careful when that globe drops. All right, it's gonna drop. Be very careful. I get halfway down here and it drops. I close my eyes. I actually did this. I close my eyes and I wait for the crash. I don't hear the crash. I open my eyes. <laughs> He did not put his foot out to catch it. It fell onto his foot. <laughs> he is a, as amazed as I was, and we both broke up. It was, oh, God, thank you. Moment. <sighs> daily, daily, daily over months. Amazing. Upstairs classrooms and downstairs fellowship hall. Okay, there we go. So now we're building out the classrooms in the back and that should be, there you go. All right, the rooms were small rooms, the walls and everything else. All the walls were torn out and the rooms were expanded. All, all of these walls are new. Same thing that happens in our lives. God is creating something functional. Functional. All right? <sighs> Amazing process. But, wait. Get, get, get. Okay. The, uh, oh. You know, I learned to listen to people who knew what they were doing as the contractor. I very quickly learned that I needed to listen to those who understood what needed to be done. I made hundreds, literally hundreds, plural, of decisions, of choices. They would tell me, not the, not the folks working, but their bosses and so forth, the team leaders, you, we can do this, this, or this. If we do that, this is gonna be the result and so forth. You make the choice. And I did. I made some good choices. I made other choices that sequence down the road, we had to fix. We had to do something different. It was amazing. And finally, okay, there we go. So here we are today, and that's supposed to be automatic. There you go. All right. This is amazing, folks. This is really wondrous, what God has done inside this building. Okay, and here's what 
remains to be done. This field in the back has got all this dirt piled up back here, all right? That dirt came from the front out here at the parking lot. They had to dig down two, three foot to get all of the wet sludge that had, because of the wetness over here, out of the front in order to be able to put a parking lot out there. So we've got two, three foot of chert, rock and stone, out here, and all of that dirt back there. That needs to be leveled out and seeded very quickly because we've got events taking place in April. in April. So folks, pray for dry weather. That's I'm serious because I've already, the, the um, contractor has already been notified we need this done and he's big bulldozer or whatever. He can't bring it out here until that is dry enough. So that's a prayer request to get this piece done. Okay, the rear patio. We've had the supports repaired and that type of thing, but that metal roof and everything else needs to be cleaned off and repainted and or replaced. All right. And then we need lighting and so forth installed out there for the summer evenings if we have activities. Uh, the church name, Grace Valley, is going to be placed on the front of the building here in large uh, LED letters that in the evening will come on themselves and during the day will go off, all right? And it will be Grace Valley, okay? There's room for Grace Valley. Out in the frontage out here, all right, this field over here, when it rains, becomes a lake. Some of you may have seen it. There, there are actual geese floating around over here in this field, all right? That drains across the frontage of our property through underneath the drive piping and out in this neighbor's yard to the uh, 411 out here. That needs to be regraded because it's been decades, needs to be regraded. All of that piping needs to be cleaned out and that enables all of this drainage to flow out and won't gather on the front of our property out here or parking lot that's going to be out there, all right? So all of that needs to be regraded and cleaned out. Then there's a the front entrance. It's been decided not to put up an electronic sign, all right? You know, like you see at churches and that type of thing, what's happening and so forth. What we're going to do is going to have uh, this uh, stone entrance two stone, you know, the curved stone entrances with our name in that stone, you know, round oval, whatever, Grace Valley Bible Church, all right? And there'll be a flag out there in the frontage. We're gonna clean up the frontage out here. Hopefully, sometime in the near future, they're gonna make this 411 wider. So we're gonna to have to back up and so forth and prepare ourselves for what's coming there, all right? So this is a rendition, my rendition, of what it might look like, all right? Something like that. But that whole frontage is gonna be a parking lot. It's gonna come in two layers. The first layer of uh, asphalt will cover the parking lot here. The second layer, and we may have it done at the same time, but the second layer will cover the drive around the building as well as the front out here. So it'll be all new and there'll be, it won't necessarily look like that, but it'll be that type of entrance with the flag out there. And then conclusion here, <laughs> Father, I have, I have learned to love his word. Ron, my goodness, I can't get enough of his word. It's been amazing. The command, and this goes back for me into 64, 65, 66, 19, all right? 
Back in those years, I had gotten saved I'd, I'd, in combat. I'd come home. I was in college. And I, what was etched into my soul was that verse. I mean, it's so personal for me. To go into all the world and preach the gospel to everyone. And then sitting under Ron and the colonel and whomever, the word of God is alive, active, sharper than any two-edged sword penetrating as far as division of my soul and my spirit, renovating, tearing walls down, rebuilding the joints and the marrow and able to judge the thoughts and the intentions of the heart, which is the lesson we just heard the first half. God's perfect timing. Engage, folks. We are the body of Christ. We're, we're the, we, God has brought us here, placed us here, enabled all of this. This is, uh, on the one side, this is just a building. But it's so much more than that. It's you. There's a community out here. There are communities that need our spiritual growth, our maturity. They, they desperately need the word of God. They're hungry for it. Engage. So, questions? Rick will have a, a moment, which will probably take him about 30 seconds, <laughs> to uh, share money side of it. All right? Talk about costs and all that business. All right? But God's grace is amazing. So, Ronald, it's uh, 11.34. I'm four minutes over. Not today, yeah. Not, not today, yeah. He's not ready. Okay. Yeah. No. He, he's still trying to balance the book here. <laughs> okay, folks. Thank you. Do I want to close in prayer? What? Close in prayer, and then Rick will take a... Oh, the pledge. Yep. Yep. Well, <laughs> I know I say this frequently, Father, but I you know my soul. Just look at you. Just look at what you can do. <sighs> it's been such a privilege, such an honor, so humbling. And yet, whew, so awesome to walk this path, to be commissioned, to be asked, to be enabled. My goodness, sir. Use us. Use. We're here. We're in the land. We're here. Thank you. Enable us. Enable our gifts. Give us, give us the focus, the mission, the objective. Get it done, sir, in us and through us. To your glory, through the power of Christ.